Hello, and welcome to the Folklore and Fiction Podcast. My name is Kelly McCath Morin. I'm a PhD candidate in the Folklore Department at Memorial University of Newfoundland, and I'm also a speculative fiction writer under the pseudonym C.S. McCath. The Folklore and Fiction Podcast and Dispatch synthesize these passions with a focus on folklore scholarship aimed at storytellers. You'll find the Folklore and Fiction archive along with the rest of my work online at folkloreandfiction.com. Interested listeners will find a link to the current dispatch in the show notes, where a more comprehensive record of this episode can be found, including a bibliography and other references. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast was first published as a newsletter in July 2019. I'm recording it as a supplemental podcast now so that new listeners and subscribers have an opportunity to engage with the material. In it, I'm discussing the ballad genre, with help from scholars Gordon Hall-Gerald, David Buchan, Roger Renwick, and others, helping you analyze a ballad and discussing ways to bring ballads to your storycraft. I would add before going on that there are many ballad traditions in the world, each of them rich and nuanced. It would be impossible to write about them all here, so I don't intend to try. Instead, I'll be focusing on the ballads collected in Francis James Child's ten-volume work, The English and Scottish Popular Ballads, which are among the oldest in the English language. I would also point out that even this collection of narrative songs represents a complex tradition I can only summarize in a newsletter. So I'll be covering the basics and touching upon the role of memory and the composition and performance of these songs. A Brief History of the Child Ballad The child ballads emerged in the late Middle Ages and were fully established as a song type before the 16th century. By the beginning of the 18th century, the creation of new songs had begun to taper off. But the ones that already existed remained popular in English and Scottish oral tradition. These ballads are divided into four categories, magical and marvelous, romantic and tragic, historical and legendary, and humorous. Given the age of the child ballads, 18th century scholar Bishop Thomas Percy believed they might once have been chanted or sung to harp accompaniment. However, many early collectors took down the texts of ballads but neglected the airs, leaving us with only half of the material we need to understand them. Folklore scholar Gordon Hall Gerald indicates that airs written for these ballads after the fact were sentimentalized and enfeebled, but we're fortunate that Child himself included in the final volume of his work the airs for nearly 50 of the ballads he collected. In the 1970s, Bertrand Harris Bronson revisited this effort, authoring The Traditional Tunes of the Child Ballads, Volumes 1 through 4, which are musical companions to Child's collection. His later abridged volume, The Singing Tradition of Child's Popular Ballads, incorporates key elements of the others and is listed in the bibliography below. Folkloric Definition of the Child Ballad Gordon Hall Gerald defines the ballad as a narrative folk song that tells a story, is sung to a rounded melody, and is always passed from singer to learner by word of mouth. Gerald's definition takes into consideration the importance of oral tradition to the ballads, since he follows it by arguing that while a poem might be written using the ballad format, it cannot be called a ballad until it has been reshaped by verbal transmission over time. However, the ballad is difficult to define even for scholars, and indeed Gerald's widely cited definition contains hidden complexities. First, verbal transmission happens differently in literate and non-literate societies. David Buchan addresses this in his discussion of Gerald's definition, and later writes that in literate societies, a learner might write a singer's ballad down, commit it to memory by reading it several times, and later recall it more or less verbatim. However, a learner from a non-literate society does not follow the same path to ballad mastery. Instead, she focuses on the plot, primary characters and scenes, drops those into a meter and rhyme scheme already associated with ballad singing, and peppers the result with stock phrases that have specific meanings to her audience, which is already accustomed to parsing ballads. In effect, this non-literate learner becomes a singer who composes on the fly while she's performing. It's also a primary reason why Child noted so many versions of the ballad. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast is a preview, and you can listen to the full episode on the Folklore and Fiction website. 
Just click on the dispatch link in the show notes or go to folkloreandfiction.com and sign up for a free account. Thanks very much for your interest. Copyright 2019 to 2023. Kelly S. McCath Morin. All rights reserved unless Creative Commons licensing is specifically applied.